What's good y'all, your boy Ross back at again with another video. So we're going to check out wrestlers getting angry backstage. Now we've heard plenty of stories of wrestlers getting into it backstage. You, can, you know, with the combination of people trying to be at the top of the card, trying to make as much money as possible, egos get involved. You know, sometimes things go awry in the ring and, you know, they handle it backstage. It's 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 part of the business, you know. It's unfortunate, but it happens. And uh, we're gonna check out some of these moments of where wrestlers say, "You know what? I'm upset with you. I definitely probably want to throw hands with you, legitimately." So this should be a very interesting one. Appreciate all the love and support you guys have shown on the channel so far. Let's get right into this one, man. Fans often see wrestlers get angry in the ring, but rarely do you get to see the drama that goes on backstage. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I know. I don't know what the f to say. I didn't you say nothing say to the goddamn kid. I understand that. Well, no, you don't, because I'm f making a videotape to some kid. In this video, you'll see some rare backstage arguments caught on camera, a few of which even led to real fights. Hey, you piece of Oh. March 30th to Hey, shout out to the dude letting him slap him by at least a good three times before he said, I. Right. He gave him like two to three freebie hits and then he said, I, right, bro, you're going down. He better than me because all it would have took is one slap. All right. All right. We're about to have a real match in the locker room, man. First one to tap out. <laughs> the first person to tap out match. Oh, I'm going to beat your ass for real match. And it's not for a title, it's just because. 2003 was the day Brock Lesnar nearly died. In his first WrestleMania match, the Beast took on the Olympic gold medalist, Kurt Angle. The two phenomenal athletes had one of the most physical WrestleMania matches of all time, but it nearly ended in tragedy. Mm -hmm. Earlier in the day, people backstage told Brock Lesnar that he should perform a shooting star press. Brock had performed this move earlier in his career, but stopped due to how dangerous it was. Lesnar did not want to do the shooting star press, but got talked into it. After mm -hmm. wrestling with Kurt Angle for 20 minutes, Lesnar got onto the top rope to perform the high-risk move. Oh it did not God. pay off and nearly cost Brock his life as he landed on his head and neck. Somehow, oh. Lesnar was able to get back up and finish the match, but Lesnar's condition was getting worse and eventually yep. he snapped. I was getting warm, I was getting sick. Now all these people surrounded me and I was just going nuts. You know, people were grabbing me and wanted me down the stretcher and wanted me in the ambulance and I wasn't having any of that. Yeah, WWE wrestlers are constantly getting asked to do you, can, you can definitely tell he was out of it, man. I mean, legendary match, and it was an unfortunate situation. That's why it's it's always best to kind of work within your comfort zone. I know people try to pressure you, hey, you should do this. Nah, do what's best for you. Work within your comfort zone. That's just, you can take that, that lesson, life lesson outside of just wrestling. Work within your comfort zone. Don't try to do anything that you're not comfortable with because someone else deems or says, hey, you should try this. This would be cool. Work within your comfort zone. Interviews. Not only that, but in some cases, the interviewer is trying to manipulate the wrestler into saying mm. something they don't want to. Former WWE star before. Dean Ambrose, aka John Moxley, saw exactly what this camera crew was trying to do and called them out. You asked me the same question like 15 times. And I'm not gonna manufacture some answer for you. Like, go find somebody else and give them a script. Stop trying to, like, lead me into saying the things you want me to say. This is not the oh, only damn. time Ambrose got legitimately upset backstage. In late 2017, Dean Ambrose suffered a triceps injury and was out of action for nine months. Finally, in August 2018, Ambrose was getting ready to make his return. A WB camera crew was filming the Lunatic Fringe when he got a phone call informing him plans had changed. No way. You're kidding me. I am feeling good. I happen to be feeling fantastic. Thank you for asking. No, yeah, I'm gonna be there. I'm not, cause I'm having out there. Except for, you know, the last eight months, like where I nearly died. But thanks for calling. No, now, now you call. I'm gonna get on a plane and go all the way back to the East Coast. About this much notice. I've been back in the game for like 30 seconds and I'm already getting pissed off. It was Damn. uncommon to have cameras backstage at WWE shows. Which is one of the reasons why obviously he left and he probably won't return. It, I, would I love to see you know, uh, Dean Ambrose or AKA John Moxley back in WWE, of course, but we kind of know it's probably not going to happen. Well, I don't know. You never say never, but it seems like he's probably going to retire in AEW because he gets to do the things he wants. So 
was in the 1980s. This was because wrestlers really broke character back then to keep fans believing it was all real. However, backstage was a safe place for wrestlers to be themselves. Mm -hmm. At one event though, someone was able to get backstage with a camera and secretly filmed Andre the Giant and some other wrestlers. Once they saw the intruder, Andre made it clear he was not welcomed. Hey, the f on there. So far, these incidents haven't led to anyone getting Yeah, they back then they were trying to keep kayfabe alive, so it was unless the cam that, unless they knew there was a camera being presented back there for like a segment or whatever, they usually tried to keep kayfabe alive back in the day. So they didn't want cameras or people back there. You know, they they had photos and stuff, they would keep it to themselves. They would they would try to keep kayfabe alive as much as possible. Especially back then. Um, and if they saw something, they like, hey, bro, get get out of here, because obviously it's, they're trying to protect protect the business. It's gonna look very weird, you know, especially back then. If you see two wrestlers that are trying to legitimately kill each other, they get backstage. Someone takes a picture of them high fiving each other. People, you know, people back then thought it was real, and that's why they were very strict on that type of stuff of letting people see what was really going on behind the scenes into a fight, but this next one did. CM Punk's arrival in All Elite Wrestling oh, in 2021 was a huge moment for the happen. company. However, Punk's tenure in AEW was filled with controversy. This was first brought to light in 2022 when CM Punk went on a tirade during a media scrum after AEW's All Out pay-per-view. And the fact that I have to sit up here because we have irresponsible people who call themselves EVPs and couldn't manage a target and they spread lies and bullshit. These verbal attacks would soon become physical. After CM Punk left the media scrum, he was confronted by those EVPs he had just insulted. The confrontation soon turned physical, with CM uh -huh. Punk getting into a real fight with Kenny Omega and Matt and Nick Jackson. The incident was so bad that CM Punk ended up signing a lifetime NDA, preventing him from ever talking about what happened at All Out. While no footage of that backstage fight exists, the fight that happened after that does. Yes, CM Punk got into two backstage fights within two years in AEW. Yep. After the incident at All Out, out, Punk was sent home. Nine months later, the best in the world would return, but it wouldn't last long. During his nope. second run in AEW, Punk said he was asked to help with a dispute backstage. Fellow wrestler Jack Perry was adamant about doing a stunt where you'd go through a real car windshield. Multiple backstage personnel had told Perry no, but he still wanted to perform the stunt. That's when CM Punk was asked to step in and use his authority as a veteran wrestler to tell Jack Perry no. According to CM Punk, Perry was calm and understanding when Punk explained why he would not be slammed through a real car windshield. That seemed to be the end of it. However, not long after, the argument was opened again, and this time, it ended much worse. During AEW's all-in pay-per-view, Jack Perry was competing in a match when he said this to the camera. Page of Rob Van Dam. Come here. Jack you know Perry this is right crushing here? and then crushing. Real the, glass. Crushing the abdomen. Go cry me a river. Obviously, this was a direct shot stupid. taken at CM Punk. This, this upset dumb. Punk, and he confronted Jack Perry after the match. The footage doesn't have any audio, but after a brief conversation, CM Punk shoved Jack Perry and put him in a headlock. People nearby were quick to break up the altercation, but nonetheless, the incident got a lot of attention. The backstage fight ultimately led to CM Punk leaving AEW and eventually rejoining WWE. Speaking of WWE, a and it's just one of those type of things where all of that could have really been avoided if Tony just would have stepped in, bro. He, think about that he they would still have cm punk they would all they had to do was just tony just should have stepped in he didn't step in he just let things fester he let things get to where they were there's no way i'm letting my top guy walk out and go right back to the competition he hadn't been to the competition in almost 10 years a competition that's under new management a competition that's actually going crazy right now with the numbers there's no way i legitimately let that happen you don't let that happen that's when you sit everybody down this is what's going to fucking happen you don't have to like each other you don't have to even you know care about each other on that level but there needs to be some type of level of respect. When we get into this ring, we do business and we're going to do it. If you have a problem, if anybody have a problem with that, I will cut your contract loose and you can go. Imagine the money they legitimately could have made. CM Punk versus the EVPs, whatever you wanted to do. You could have 
Bro, imagine the story they could tell with the EVPs going rogue with CM Punk trying to maintain things. There was so much money they threw away because of ego and pride. And Tony Khan just wasn't the boss he needed to be to step up and say, no, this is how we're going to do this. This is what's going to happen. If you guys have a problem with it, you're gone. I'm the boss. I say what I say goes. I pay the checks around here. So it's unfortunate, man. A similar incident happened decades before CM Punk's backstage fight and actually resulted in someone getting hurt. In 1997, the WWE champion Bret Hart was leaving WWE to work uh, for their competitor, WCW. We His know about last this match one. for the company was at the Survivor Series we pay per view in Montreal, Quebec. Hart's contract gave him reasonable creative control and he decided not to lose the championship. The owner of WWE, Vince McMahon, wanted Hart to lose the title but legally couldn't say no. So he did something different. During Bret Hart's final he's WWE brutal. match, McMahon had the bell run and awarded the victory to Bret's opponent, Shawn Michaels. This was all planned behind Bret's back and the hitman was just as shocked as the fans. Since mm -hmm. this happened on live TV, most people have seen this infamous moment, but mm -hmm. few have seen what happened backstage. Sean, you were in on that? Yeah, that's in this book. Fucking idea. I didn't know why. God is my fucking witness. My hands are clean of this one, I swear to God. He's yelling me out there. I gave him a help when I came back here. I will not have any part of it. And he was lying his ass off. He definitely knew. <laughs> Sean definitely knew. He, he fucking knew. He knew what was going on too, but you know. After the cameras left, Bret Hart would have a private meeting with Vince McMahon. Bret then shared what happened immediately after. What happened? Somehow Vince ran into my hand, but I drilled him as hard as I could. Knocked him right out. You knocked out Vince McMahon with a punch? I told him to get out. Don't look at the camera, trans. <laughs> And once again, this is, think about that. Even if if he what he said is legitimately true, he punched, socked Vince McMahon. No charges was pressed or nothing. You want to know why? Because this was a different time period, bro. Men moved differently back then. This was no, oh my God, I'm going to get my lawyers. No, it was, this was more on some pride type shit. Vince could have eased him, I'm going to press charges on you. He didn't. So, I'm just putting it into perspective. I'm not saying that what, you know, Brett did was right. Obviously, he felt he was upset. He was very emotional. But this is the, the differences in time periods that we live in now. Like, people are willing to scrap it back then. They're willing to fight it out, whatever the case may be, to get whatever they need to get out. And then they move on. Not fucking pussyfoot around and, and try to be sneaky and try to, you know, try to get you fired or do some some underhanded tactics to prove your point. Like, it was, I have an issue with you. You screwed me over. We You have to run my fade. That's just what it was. So... <laughs> This isn't the first time a wrestler has been mad at Vince McMahon. Brock Lesnar and Roman Reigns' yep. Universal Championship this match at WrestleMania too. 34 is considered to be one of the worst main events in WWE history. The crowd was not into it, with fans chanting, this is awful, during the bout. Oh my God, and now Lesnar awful match. Oh my God. It didn't help either that the match went through some last minute changes. In the end, Brock Lesnar beat Roman and yeah. retained the Universal title. Despite the victory, the Beast was mad, presumably because of how horrible his match was. After the match was over, Brock went backstage and did this. Yep, he threw the title. Look at the rage on the face in the eyes. Bah, threw it right at him, bro. Yeah. If this were anybody else. <laughs> and here's the thing, it was Brock. What the fuck Vince was gonna do? He was not about to fire him. He threw the title, and that title's heavy. He just threw it at him. Like, fuck you, Vince. That's, it's, diff it, they operate differently, bro. They grew from a different era. They operate differently. They probably would have been fired for showing this level of disrespect to Vince McMahon, but this is Brock Lesnar. Yeah. In fact, it was reported that McMahon and Lesnar later talked things over and made amends. After wrestling for 30 years. That's what I'm saying. Because they know it's money to be had 
years, Terry Funk was hanging up his boots and retiring. The hardcore icon was going to have one last match before calling it quits and hope that his friend and fellow wrestler, Dennis Stamp, would be there. However, Stamp wasn't booked and refused to attend. Terry Funk then went to his friend and asked him to come to his retirement match, leading to an argument. How's everything going? <laughs> I'm not going to be here, but... Why aren't you? Because I'm not booked. You're not going to be here. Why aren't you going to be here? Please be here. I'm not going to be here, Terry, because I'm not booked. That's a, that's, that's an old rule. You. That's an but old rule I've had for a long time. Because I'm not involved. I want you to come, please. Well, I'm asking I, you to please come. All right. I've are, I, I already have other. Come. I already have other arrangements, and and and, and don't take come. it personally because I, I used to be in the dressing room and I used to see the old guys. And that's where I am now. I used to see the old guys that came in the dressing room that come around and they looked like old dogs just hoping somebody would recognize them. Here, Spot. Who wants you to come and see us? I really have to be involved and I'm not. I want you to be there. You know, and I did, and I did ask you in you April if I could referee some matches on the card, which would have been. You're refereeing tonight, Which would, would have been. You're would, tonight. But I'm not on the card. I'm not booked. Refereeing. You want to referee me and Brett? Uh, Brett? Referee me and Brett? I, I already have I already have I other arrangements made. Terry. Yeah. I want you to referee me and Brett. I'm just I guess I okay, so there. so what happened? I I'm guess you just miles an I hour guess it was I'm just doing. so far down a, I guess you just didn't didn't hear me or something when I asked you before. I don't or didn't Dennis, think about I it. I didn't even know about, about it. it. But I want you to. I want you to. I appreciate that. Okay, I want you to. Okay. Will you please do it. Appreciate it. It's my that. last match. It's my last match. Call me if you can, because I would love it. Okay. I appreciate that, Terry. Damn. I appreciate that. Dennis Stamp did end up attending the show and was right by his friend's side. In fact, Stamp was the referee for Terry Funk's match that night against Bret Hart. Santino Morella was wow. one. Wow, rest in peace, Terry Funk. I'm glad that we were able to sort that out. He he really wanted him to be a part of that the funniest WWE wrestlers of all time, but just like everyone, he can get ticked off too. In 2005, Santino was training at WWE's development system, OVW. During a show, Santino was playing a fan in the crowd. He was supposed to act afraid of the boogeyman, but instead, he laughed. The man in charge, Jim Cornette, uh, became enraged and slapped Morella afterward. Cornette yeah. ended up getting fired and Santino continued his WWE career. Yeah. Over a decade later, yeah. while at a convention, Morella and Cornette bumped into each other and it went as well as you would expect. Yep, they don't like guy, each other. He's trying to start a fight with me, and I'm trying to walk away from him. And I don't have nothing else to say to you. Bro, they do. Now we saw how CM Punk manhandled Jack Perry, but how well would he have done in a real fight? To find out, oh, watch. Oh man, bro, yeah, they do not like each other at all. <laughs> this was a very uh, good video just to go down memory lane. Some of these clips I've never seen before. Some of them I have to, you know, kind of get the understanding and the context to, you know, some things happen, you know, that are unfortunate behind the scenes and, you know, it, it tends to get physical, but this is a physical demanding sport. A lot of egos are involved and a lot of testosterone is involved and it's bound to happen. But as long as you're able to just, hey, we set our sides, you know, we, we you know, set our differences aside. We, hey, let's make some money. Let's, let's, let's make the best possible, uh, best product possible. Like I always bring this story up, the Edge and Matt Hardy situation. That was a real thing. That was a real situation. Matt Hardy legitimately lost his girl. And then Edge legitimately took his girl. That was a real thing. And, you know, that, that's as personal as it can get. And the way it happened with Matt being injured and wanted uh, Edge to watch out for Lita only for them to gain some type of love for each other some type of feelings for each other while he's hurt that was that's tough but guess what some may say they shouldn't have turned this into an angle but they did they did they worked together and mind you this is your one of your best friends sleeping with your girl and you lose your girl because of it and y'all still able to come together in the ring he's a better man than me <laughs> Matt's always been a better man than me ain't no fucking way 
But hey, comment down below. Let me know some other wrestling backstage fights that wasn't listening in this video, but you've heard about plenty of times before. Let me know down below. But I appreciate all love and support. Road to 150K. And I'm still young, speedy YouTube wrestling champ of the world. Appreciate y'all keeping with me. See you on the next one. Peace.